Okay, welcome everyone. Um, there's going to be a couple people that are arriving late, but uh, we, we should just get started right now. So I'm Susan McPhee, and we have uh, Eric and Mika here uh, today. And, and Jenna is also going to be presenting as well. Okay. Wow. Supporting. Supporting. Okay. So um, just to introduce uh, our speakers today, uh, Mika has been facilitating uh, nonviolent communication or compassionate communication um, uh, groups such as parents and facilitators and community groups for over 10 years. And that's how, that's how we met. And uh, Eric has been, uh, is, excuse me, is a certified nonviolent communication or compassionate communication trainer, as well as um, training in attachment theory, interneural inter biology, as well as, um, help me out here. Uh, one of, one, it's, it's lots of other things. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. He's so great. <laughs> so um, please help me welcome Eric and Jenna and Mika. And thank you so much, Susan, for organizing this and to this community for hosting this. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and. Uh, I'm grateful that you've taken the time to be here, especially on such a beautiful day. I hope you got some sun already today. Serious competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the keeners in the room. <laughs> um, a few logistics before we get going. Our plan for the day is up here. You may not be able to read it, so I, it's going to go over there. So if you want to look at it another time, maybe during the break. But essentially, we're going to introduce you to compassionate communication, uh, also known as nonviolent communication, or NVC is the short. And we're going to focus on how we can use our attention and our words and our energy to calm upsets and work through conflict and deepen connection. And then we're going to introduce restorative systems. Restorative systems are agreements and structures that a group or a community make that support ongoing restorative responses to conflict. So that will be one of the topics. And then restorative circles is a particular process for responding to conflict that uh, whose aim is to restore connection as well. So those are the three main things we'll be covering today. And we'll be looking at specific tools within compassion, communication, and restorative circles. Just, uh, we'll do a quick opening round to hear your voices. Quick meaning, whatever you need to say to be present. If you could, if you want to name how you're feeling, any needs that are alive for you. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, if you have a particular hope for today, I'd love to hear that. And if you keep it to one or two sentences, so that we I have, we have lots that we're excited to bring for today, um, that'll give us lots of time. So, would you be willing to start? Sure. So, my name is Mika, and um, I'm excited to be here. I grew up in Miami, and I know Susan from um, other things that we've done together. I'm just really excited to share what I've learned and see if you, it's a benefit. So I'm Cheryl. I have heard lots about compassionate communication, but I haven't been to any course before, so I'm very excited to hear the, the part that you're going to do about that. Um, you need to know that I have a terrible headache, oh. so I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, I, I'm functioning. I might fall asleep later on. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, my name's April. Um, I live here at Winsong, and um, I would like to know more about compassionate communication. I have the book, Nonviolent Communication, I bought eons ago um, and read it, but I, I find that um, as much as I like reading or learning from books, I think this is a more person-to-person -person kind of thing to learn. And I'd like to be able to be uh, better at that in the community that I live in and all the relationships I'm in in the world. Um, um, but, you know, really for the community I live in. 
Um, and I'd like to um, come away today, I would like to have a little bit more practical, what can I do with the very next person that I meet? Mm. That maybe there's a little bit of, um, uh, maybe some conflict or misunderstanding or something. Thank you, April. I recently moved into Winsong and I've been interested in communities for a long time and so um, I'm learning about living in community and so I was glad to, that I can attend this workshop. I'm, I'm also a counselor and you know but uh, I'm really looking forward to learning some more here. Thank you. And your pronunciation, Lucia? Lucia. Lucia, thank you, Lucia. I'm the Santo. And, um, I've, I've done the, the 13 week workbook and read Marshall Rosenberg's book, but I, I think I came from a background where I, I've actually valued being honest over being more gentle with things. Like, a, yeah. And uh, so I kind of got the honesty thing to unpack. So I think I could learn more about this. <laughs> this is good, yeah. And I, I just um, appreciate, yeah, sometimes it's really hard to say something to somebody in, a, in our community or in any kind of interaction. And yeah. I'd like to know good ways to do that. Thank you, Basanto. Yeah. My name is Frida. And I would like to know good ways to do that, too. Uh -huh. um, I have taken two courses uh, at the uh, hospice, for the hospice society. Mm -hmm. And I have learned a few things there, mainly um, listening, lots of listening. But <clears throat> sometimes there's the need to speak as well. It's good to listen than to be quiet but it's also good to speak what we need to speak and to speak it compassionately and, uh, and uh, truthfully and lovingly and all those words. So. Yeah. Um, I'm Angela and um, I was here for a visit last weekend and saw the poster for this workshop and it resonated with me right away. So. Um, what some of the other people have said applies to me as well. Um, I want to have the skills and the tools to interact with people in a way that I would put me with compassion. So I'm very, very excited. Thanks, Angela. I'm Ingrid, and uh, I too am looking for skills in communication, in interacting. I'm very interested in co housing. I've been a currently on the strata council for our building and we have lots of fuss and bother going on there yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so i'm kind of curious about possibly the potential not just learning skills for myself to be able to interact better with others but the possibility of bringing this sort of uh, communication into a different situation uh, that of the strata We'll see. Yeah, thanks, Drew. <laughs> My name is Lorna. I have done the nonviolent course, but I couldn't teach it if I don't really know it. Uh, particularly the conflict resolution, when something bothers me, either personally or in community, I'd like to have ways of dealing which are neither stuffing it, I'm hardly able to sleep because of irritation and running different drama, dramas in my head. Um, I find a way in which I don't hurt the other person, unless I intend to, and can deal with the conflict in a better way than I could. I mean, I don't want to whine, I don't want to explode, and I don't want to stuff it. What else can I do? Thank you, Laura. Uh, my name is Gary. I'm um, I'm uh, I believe in co-housing, and I, I'm also a development consultant. So I'm tra trying to take the co-housing way of living and, and and just duplicate this model across North America, starting in BC. 
But I spend my day working with real estate, tradespeople, consultants, engineers, bankers, and I need to learn. And if they, you know, they are the least empathetic <laughs> to generalize. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of sociopathic kind of activity going on in that circle, and I need to be able to deal with that way of communication, but turn it off. You know, for both my home life and you know the communities I, I want to try and facilitate, and talk like a human being. Yeah. When I after I've spent you know a couple of hours in meetings with some banker or something like that, so I'm trying to bridge that and learn how to change gears. Okay, thank you, Gary. That's all you have to do. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm glad I have all that. <laughs> Uh, my name is Leslie. I live here. I'm one of the founding members. So, 18 years of living in community. I've experienced lots of uh, teaching moments, learning moments, I guess, here. And I still don't think I really have a good handle on handling conflict. So, um, I have a fairly direct style, which doesn't always work terribly well. I, I need to learn the more subtle ways of dealing with people in conflict. Yes. So that's why I'm here. Thank you, Leslie. And maybe let's come on. Um, so I put on and coordinated uh, today's uh, workshop because I really want uh, to integrate that interconnectedness of um, when I talk with someone, I'm not just talking with that person, but I'm talking with all the people that that person knows, interacts with, communicates with. So that way, this sense of interconnectedness flows not just through me, but also through others. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Susan. I'm Jenna. I've known of NBC on Violet Communication for about eight years, and the last four years been studying it. Um, and starting to share it and supporting it being shared. I recently moved into a collective house, so I was really interested to come and have a conversation with this topic in a um, co-housing situation, so interested to hear how it lives in community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, John. And I'm Eric, and I'm delighted to be here. I, I uh, love the idea of any kind of community um, intentionally working together to create something that's more sustainable, connected, fun, and, uh, interdependent. Um, as Susan said, I am a certified online communication trainer. I have been for five or six years or so. And uh, the person who developed nonviolent communication, Marshall Rosenberg, just passed away in the last couple of weeks. <coughs> so I'd just like to acknowledge him and the work that he's done, and it's made a tremendous impact on, on my life. He's probably had the most influence on me outside of my family. Um, it really helped me connect more deeply with myself, come back to my emotions, find ways to connect more deeply with others. And um, yeah, he really inspired me a lot. So, blessings to Marshall. And, um, and he was a real human being too. I got to do some workshops with him and he struggled with his own process. So, you know, this is really a practice. That for me and for most people that I hear, it's a practice that I'll be getting hopefully better at. Or as Marshall liked to say, uh, what did he say, less stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Over the whole course of my life. Nonviolent communication for me, and also known as NBC, or compassionate communication, it's really about connection. And there are different parts to it that support connection. One of them is how we use our language. One of them is how we connect with ourselves and our own bodies and our feelings and needs. One of them is how we listen. But it's all for me about how are we connected. And so what I stress right off the bat is that the idea is not to speak a perfect way all the time when you're speaking. That's 
not nonviolent communication, to speak in the specific process that Marshall developed. The way of speaking is only one piece of the puzzle. So I don't want anyone to leave here thinking that we need to speak this way all the time, especially when there's conflict and so on, because I don't trust that that will create connection. Sometimes it could be kind of alienating. Yeah, it can be very alienating. Sometimes it really makes a difference, sometimes it's alien. So with that idea of what's of, of how can we connect, I'd like you to uh, just get into a pair or a group of three, whatever you end up in, and just explore that question for a few minutes. Just take sort of back and forth for a few minutes. Um, actually, no, I'd like to do it this way. One person's going to share for a couple of minutes. And they're going to share what are the things that are most important to you. Because when we're connecting, we're trying to connect to what's most important, what's most alive. So when you think of your life, your relationships, your dreams, the most fulfilling life, connected life, what's most important to you in that? What gives you the most confidence that you're going to have a really fulfilling, connected life? And the partner who's listening is just going to hold space and try to support those things to um, flower, to unfold by mostly being silent, but also asking to hear a little bit more of the question why. So for example, I might ask Jenna, Jenna, what's most important to you? Authenticity. Authenticity. And I might say, why is authenticity so important? To get to be my whole self. Get to be your whole self. And then I'm going to say, what else is really important to you? Cats. Cats are really important. And why are cats really important? Because they're really authentic. <laughs> maybe I want to ask another why is it important to you that cats are authentic <laughs> or maybe I just go on to what else so what I'm doing is trying to give Jenna lots of space to discover more of herself and what's important and um, the way we listen to each other can really help us to discover more of who we are or can sometimes shrink our so a couple minutes of going this way with one partner saying oh why is that and then what else and then I'm going to drum that's kind of my chime and when you hear me drum then you stay with the same partner but then this partner says oh, that's important. and I say oh music's so important why because it brings me so alive so same thing in the other direction for a couple minutes anybody have any questions Okay, so just scoot and face your partner. Looks like we're actually Shall we? even number. Oh, and then Susan and our Nico will Okay, so I go first, and you ask me, or I ask you. What's important to you? Okay. So, actually, I like the answer because authenticity is important to me. So, um, Jenna's offered to describe. I'd just love to hear what are some of the things you got to that are most important to you? Anybody willing to share? chose three things, many, many things, yeah. but I sort of tr chose broad categories. She's really good at breaking some of those down. But I was thinking of all, all the beings that I relate to, uh, you know, human and, and non-human beings. Um, and my relationship with nature, of course, and, and nature and my relationship with ancient wisdom. So uh, those, um, for me, are, and really speak to, up to authenticity. And, uh, okay. I had relationships. And so do you, you said to okay. You said all the beings that you connect with. Is that right? Was that one? Well, sure. So so relating to all beings. All beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell us, tell me a little bit about why why is that important? Um, in, in, because I think relationships are the most important thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we need air and all that, but yeah. you know, 
we need to have healthy relationships. So, this is so directly yeah. related to that. And the nature and uh, ancient wisdom. Yeah, so drawing strength from ancient wisdom from mm -hmm. uh, different cultures and yeah. ancient wisdom from long ago that's still pertinent to today. Yeah. Um, and, you know, going beyond just our little planet. Yeah. Um, and then, what was your other question? Just, I just wanted to make, make sure I caught all the ones that you also mm -hmm. said, uh, nature. Yeah, Na and nature. Authenticity, I think you said as well. Being, a, being an authentic being. Yeah. Thank you, April. Okay. Anybody else? Just, you can just call it out, just one of them or two of them. What are the things that you discovered are most important to you? Okay, becoming more conscious. I mean, more conscious. More present. Mm -hmm. Yes. More incarnated, you might say. More incarnated. Thank you, Lorna. Yes, Lisa. I have a kind of complex one. I'm, I'm, I, I'm vegan, uh -huh. and I live in a, a culture where there's legalized cruelty. Mm. And it, it has parallels to, like, before the American Civil War. And it has parallels to Nazi Germany, mm. where it was legal to be cruel to certain groups that could feel and sentient mm. beings. And so I'm in this, and um, I deal a lot, I do deal a lot with how to manage communications with people that are seeing things really differently. Mm -hmm. And I, um, this it occupies me a lot. I, yeah. I, I work with it very successfully because I work with people who see things in a similar way and help people ad adopt vegan diets or vegetarian or more plant-based. But it's still weird. Like it's a weird situation to be in. I think. So can I see if I'm understanding? Yeah. Is it, is, are you saying that? Uh, Respect for or kindness and decency, um, nonviolence, are those things that are really important to you in this? Yeah, I, I don't think it's that good for people to have this violence yeah. entrenched in our culture. Okay. I don't think that's good at all, and to be ignoring it. Yeah. And, um, so then are you saying health and well-being are really important? Well, to you? they're certainly important. Here you've got somebody eating something that had a lot of cruelty mm -hmm. into its life, and then they're going to get cancer from yeah. it, and heart disease at higher risk. So I'm hearing so kindness. It's, I'm cra hearing it's crazy. Health. <laughs> yeah. am, I, am I hearing you right? Kindness, well-being, uh, uh, peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, am I capturing some of what's really important here? Yeah. And yet, I'm a kind of fiery person. Uh -huh. So peace is not going to be, it's, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't okay. I'm just trying to guess. guess. Please. Would you just like integrity woven throughout our whole system, like just in every aspect of our life, integrity and responsibility? And well, it's like you walk through a door, and I've done this in a number of things, and you go, oh my God. Like, oh my God, that's what I'm doing, or that's what we're doing. Mm. And you go, oh, and if yet you were on uh, that side of the door, you were like, fine, that's what we do. Yeah, no problem. So are you wanting awareness? Uh, it is awareness. awareness. Yeah, it's more awareness, and you go, oh my goodness. Uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Anybody else want to add to the list? That's really important. We we discussed mostly authenticity and what that means. So we kind of went into depth in, into that one one thing because that was important to both of us. And are you willing to share anything about what that means for you? Um, <clears throat> being truthful, being true to yourself. Uh huh. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, yourself. Um, well, and we were talking about because we're so good at that, the opposite, well, not the opposite, but the compassionate part sometimes doesn't meld well with being mm -hmm. authentic. Mm -hmm. So if you're authentic, you might not be putting <clears throat> as much um, 
kind of caring or compassion into what the what the person you're speaking to mm -hmm. authentically what their experience is at the at that time. Right. You know, so how to how to do both of those things at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like that's really important to you too to balance your authentic expression yeah. with compassion. Is that what you're saying? Balance is a good word. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Lorna. Death prep. I mean, we have wills and some other paper, but I don't want to leave any kind of mess of any which kind for anybody who survives me. That means finding 30 years of family photographs and documents. Um, make sure people know any um, passwords of mine, uh, who to contact. I mean, wills is just the start of it. We look. And you're finding out legally, apparently you can leave instructions about, I don't want to be resuscitated, and it doesn't have much legal weight. Uh -huh. okay. So, so is it that you're really, what's important to you here is considering the impact for others? Yes. Consideration, yeah. But taking the worry off me too, you know, uh -huh. the guilt. Uh, so a peace of mind, <laughs> yes. is that part of it? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Lorna. Uh, Angela. One of the things that came up for me is um, a desire that I have around connection, because connection and relationships are very important to me as well. And when relationships have been damaged in some way, seemingly, this hope that I sort of maintain this hope that there can be, things can be restored. And that's part of why I'm here today, is because I'm not the kind of person that really wants to walk away uh -huh. when I feel like I've invested in you know, a relationship. Um, and that I care about someone, et cetera, et cetera. So that was something that sort of, it was able to, you know, say, oh yeah, this is important to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you can do uh, hope and trust in our capacity to connect with mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And is there maybe something about commitment to working through hard times? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I think so. Um, yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Desire to restore relationships? To restore, exactly. Yes, yeah. that's right. Uh, versus <coughs> walking away and just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Angela. Mm -hmm. So what we're building here is a list of what's most important, but in online communication we would call this needs or values, um, there's a lot of your words I use for it, but what's, what they're all trying to capture for me is what's most important. And I've asked this question over 10 years or nine years that I've been doing workshops and, this, and the answers are often very similar to this. And yeah, I have one. Please. Self-respect. Self-respect, mm -hmm. yes. I would like to add fun, fun to yeah. 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 Creativity. Creativity. But when you come from that space, what's that happen? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Acceptance. Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Please, anytime you want to add one, just speak up. I um, want to make sure everyone's needs are coming for you. So one of the, there's a few different um, parts of the definition for needs in nonviolent communication. One is that they're universal. Everybody has the same things that are important to them. If we can get down further enough with the why question. So Jenna, I think you answered with cats. Cats aren't important for everyone. That's not the universal <laughs> in the sense of like, you know, what's really at the heart of it. But beneath that I heard authenticity. Now we're getting to the realm of universal. So needs are abstract qualities. When we're at something that's concrete or material like a cat, we're not at the level of needs. When we get down to something that's more abstract, like hope and trust and acceptance, now we're at the same level. We're now at the level of needs. Mm -hmm. that's, really, that's really important because we don't all have the same strategies like cats or <laughs> dogs, but we all have the same need below that for authenticity, comfort, companionship. 
I was going to say, it's a funny thing. They're abstract qualities and abstract nouns, but our bodies know when they're present or not present. Mm. So when we're in conversation with someone and there isn't, and you don't have trust, you can feel it in your body. Yeah. So they're very, they're like these living energies. They've got their own power. Mm. And mm. the hope is that with this, there could be conflict at the strategy level. But if we could get down to what's common to all of us human beings, then that's the hope that we could resolve conflict. I'm looking at what, what are our deepest values? Universal needs? Yeah. And then people have a reaction to the needs, so sometimes they're called re uh, reasons why we do things, motivations, dreams, um, you know, what we live and die for, why it is that we want what we want. Just to get away from the word needs, because some people don't like it. Yeah. Um, everything we're doing is an attempt to meet a need in the practice of non communication. And when I when I heard this, I just that was a shift for me. I, I was first resistant to nonviolent nonviolent communication. I mean, I love poetry and authenticity and freedom of language and so on. So at first, I was a little resistant. But then I, when I started to get beneath that to the principles and so on, and this idea that everything we're doing is to attempt to meet a need rather than we're right or wrong, we're good or bad. And we should be punished or rewarded based on how right and wrong and good and bad we are. In nonviolent communication, it's all an effort. It's all a, an attempt to make to meet a need. And sometimes the way we meet needs don't work for others or even for ourselves. And in nonviolent communication, we try to get to what is the need that's trying to be met. What is the need that's not being met for you? And how can we work together? without punishment and reward, but through our natural state of compassion and, and love and just that juicy desire to connect and contribute, to find a different way to meet our needs. So one of the things I heard in the opening round is, what's, what's one thing I could do right now and the next time I have a conflict? One of those things is to start to listen to what's most important. Not only is whatever we're doing an attempt to meet a need, but whatever we're saying is an expression of a need. Okay? So if I said, let's say uh, Mika and I have a meeting, do you mind if I use it? Tomorrow and Mika shows up half an hour later than we agreed. And I say to Mika, Mika, you're always late. Mika can start right away listening for what's most important to me in that. And she might say, Oh, you value predictability. Yes, I do. And I really care about this project we're working on. Mm. Yeah. Sure commitment. I want to know if it's important to me too. Yes. So she's right now making a difference in what's happening here by focusing on what's most important to me. Of course, when you're not able to do that, then you just shine the light onto yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let them be themselves and go, oh my gosh, I would like a little flexibility yeah. and trust. <laughs> yes. So that's the other thing you can do is maybe you're not in a place, as Nika's saying, to focus on what's most important to you. So then you focus on what's important for you. Right? And try to get to the need. Instead of being, so let's reverse the roles. Instead of what's most important to me is that Nika's so demanding and she's <laughs> Okay, what's most important to me about that? Oh, I need flexibility, I need understanding, right? So those, that's, a, that's one thing you can do right now in any, any situation in your life, whether it has something to do with somebody else or not. You can start asking yourself, what's most important? The funny thing is about it is it has the effect of calming. It can have the effect of calming us down. Sometimes when we're in grief or we're upset and the need is not present and someone names it, then we can get in touch even with more feelings around that need. But, but in the end, it, like, um, just from practicing it, I feel like it's, it can calm us and really send, help us ground and center us. So for me, I like to think of two cornerstones whenever I'm in a relationship. So one is differentiation and one is smoking. Differentiation means I am my own unique person and I have my own needs and my own feelings. Linking means I care about your feelings too and your needs. 
And so this speaks to some of what Leslie was saying. How can I speak up for my needs and be really truthful and honest without compromising the link between us? And I still care about this person. I don't want to just, I don't want to take my my circle and just completely obliterate yours. <laughs> Here's my authenticity. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm going I'm to use NBC to say it. <laughs> right? You've got to be empathetic. <laughs> That's why I say the speaking part is only one. If I just speak, but I don't listen for what's important to them, too, then this part here is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. We're going to or we're gonna just get all. So let's practice this right now in our next partner. We can start listening right away for what's most important. Um, I'm going to invite you to find a new partner just so you can start to meet other people. And when you find a partner, one of you gets to explore what, uh, what, um, how do you feel about conflict in general? How do you feel about conflict? And all of the other partner is gonna do is listen for these things here. This is a list of needs, a little more comprehensive than this. And I invite you to the partner who's listening to have your sheet right in front of you. And so if Mika were my partner and I'm taking the turn to speak about how I feel with conflict, I might say, oh boy, I hate conflict. I wish there were no conflict in the world. It, it, uh, I just find it so hard. So do I just listen silently or do I? No, no, and then you, based on what I've said and what she finds on the list, she's going to ask me for what she she's guessing is most important to me. Mm -hmm. What needs am I expressing to this? Do you long for ease and harmony? And notice she said, do you long? It's a question. So empathy is about being curious and questioning. She's not saying, oh, you need this. She's saying, do you? You can see with her whole energy was curious and open. And then I go, yeah, harmony. Oh, yes. Just hearing that word gives me some more ease. What was the other one? Ease and harmony. Ease, oh, yeah. And then I share a little more. I just find that people get so reactive and they don't want to listen. And she's got more information now to make more needs guesses, and she might say, Do you, do you really <coughs> like it? Do you really like collaboration? Oh, I just noticed my stomach softened there. I took a breath. Mm -hmm. Collaboration won't do that. Um, do you like it when people have a sense that um, can work things out? Yeah. So Mika's starting to put some of her own words to it, which is fine. Um, if you're new to NBC or compassion communication, I really invite you to just look at the list and draw words from that. If there's a words, it's not a complete list, so if there's another word that's not on there that doesn't capture, go with that. The important thing is that you're guessing. Mm -hmm. And the person who's speaking, they get to check it out and say, you know, it's not quite collaboration. I just want to get my own way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when I get my way. And that's another need guess that she could make. Is it about flow? Is it about you being you and fully you? It's about trusting that I really matter. And then I'll drum and you will switch and do the exact same thing. What what I would like, and so when you're doing this, when you're listening for needs, you're you're helping this link. You're helping get to know this person more, but you're also differentiation, differentiating if you're staying with a curious guessing. As soon as you start telling a person what their needs are and trying to convince them, no, Mika, you really do need a lot of harmony. Right? <laughs> no, you're a Pisces, and I know <laughs> it's not like confrontation. You're a middle child. Right? <laughs> this is not helping differentiation. Right? Now we're trying to impose what we think is true on the other person. Mm -hmm. um, also, when someone needs empathy and we start putting advice in there and telling our own story, it makes this link kind of confusing as well. So empathy is a wonderful support when it's really curious and open for both of these pieces. 
before we switch, yeah, before we go into that uh, activity, does anyone have questions? Does anyone? Yeah, Lauren. I notice that sometimes what you say is what I, I would call um, a closed question, something asking for is it this or is it that, a yes, no uh, question instead of an open question. You know, this is from talking about communications. Yeah. In NPC empathy, and this is specific to nonviolent communication mm -hmm. empathy, we are asking, we're making guesses as to specific needs. Mm -hmm. And without being attached to being right. So empathy and nonviolent communication isn't, oh, Nico, what are you needing? What are you feeling? It's, are you needing trust? Are you feeling frustrated? Mm -hmm. And then if it doesn't land, then simply. No, it's not quite that. I think it's more about. And what she just did there is really wonderful for differentiation. She's checking in for herself and seeing what's true for me. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And if I can let go of my guesses and go, oh, okay, so it's not about trust. I'm really hearing it's about whatever she just said. So yes, the, the answer is yes. These are, I think you use the word closed questions. They're not open questions. But they're open to a different answer. Yeah, and I guess it's kind of to train the attention onto what's really important, onto a deeper uh, level. This, this is actually quite simple to explain, but to do is quite challenging. Because most, for me, I, I love giving advice, because I have great advice. <laughs> I also have fabulous stories, I'm very funny. There's lots of other ways I love to respond other than empathy. So I have this wiper inside my mind. Okay, no, advice, save it for later. It's not that it's wrong, it's just I'm gonna save it. Well, there's a good joke. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, I remember that reminds me of a time. Oh. Oh, okay. sure, there. So I got this going on the whole time while I'm like, oh, hey guys, this is like, trust me. I like it that he's wiping over this. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's giving her space. This is like, oh, make it out. reminds me of what and then I'm off on to my own story. Well, the point is also that it's giving space that you can join in because you came up with the starting point of that as yeah. a, a word that may or may not have been true for yeah. them, right? Yeah. So you're diving into the pool of curiosity with her. Yeah. It's that's not that's it's true. not you opposing what you think or she um, re avoiding her ego talk or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's it's about dipping into the pool together, right? Yeah. I like, I like that description of it. It's like I'm opening up this door and I'm inviting to the furniture. Also, um, there's a difference between being authentic and saying everything that's on your mind, I guess. Yeah. That could be an example yeah, of that, like you might want to give your advice because that's what you're really thinking yeah. at the time. Yeah. I would call that maybe being authentic, but it might actually be something else. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in a bit, but I really would love to give everyone a chance to practice. So um, I'm going to also invite a little bit of movement here. So if you want to stay where you are, you just stay where you are. If you would like to move around a bit, just cross over to a new chair. If you want to shake a little bit as you do, really part of the body. And, well, how do you feel about conflict is the question you're exploring. Sure.